my wife probably picked it up before I did. <laughs> but, and that's, I think, you don't want to know it it's, if it's your own. And uh, so it was kind of a, a hard thing to do. I probably <clears throat> noticed it that initially when he was having trouble making decisions between two different things, we would have two options. Should we go option A or option B? And to understand that was more difficult. How do I feel about it? Well, I'll tell you what, I certainly didn't like it. Um, and there's things that you just don't have control of. Dementia is um, what I sometimes uh, describe as an umbrella term. Uh, so it covers a lot of different specific diagnoses. And we just use the word dementia to mean a progressive loss of cognitive function. Most people have heard of Alzheimer's disease, and I get this question all the time of what's the difference between dementia and Alzheimer's disease? And the answer to that is that Alzheimer's disease is a form of dementia, a particular type of dementia, but there are many other types of dementia. Initially, it might be difficulties with short-term memory, and then more serious problems with judgment and decision-making until at the very end the individual is sometimes incontinent and is unable to perform basic functions of self-care, uh, recognition of faces and voices and things like that, certainly memory for names. W one of the most telling descriptive phrases in this stage theory that I was describing is at the very end uh, stage seven, they talked about that the brain is no longer able to tell the body what to do. He was losing language and he was very aware of it. And he said, I don't want to embarrass myself when I can't find the words to express my ideas. And so he, he kind of pulled back from his part-time job and he didn't run for re-election on the village board, which he had been on for 12 years. He just kind of decided that he was more comfortable kind of stepping back a ways. A lot more has landed on my shoulders. So I'm the person who has to um, do all the negotiating with activities and medical appointments, um, where we're going, what we're doing. Carl did all the driving. I rarely drove. Um, I never even put gasoline in a car. You know, a long time that I, that I did drive and I just time to get out of my place, you know. She's done all the driving since, and, and I appreciate that. So I'm not gonna hurt anybody. So that's it. So more of it, a little at a time, has become my responsibility. You know, let's say there's a leak in the faucet or something. I'm the person who calls the plumber. Carl would have fixed it. He was the ultimate fixer. So I find myself now having to anticipate and sort of being on alert to what's happening and what's going on and what do I need to do to make life go more smoothly. The, the community didn't um, know very much about dementia. We needed um, programs in the community that would help to reduce stigma so that people would not feel isolated. I had been doing some research that involved interviewing people in their homes who had the diagnosis and I'd heard over and over and over again about how their friends didn't come around as much anymore, how they felt like they couldn't get out into public places comfortably. In a way then our family and friends initially didn't recognize it, thought it was not true. Because you have to be with it 24-7 to really see it. Gradually they've come to understand it and to see it. Some people are a lot better at it than others. Some people have really pulled away because they're frightened by the word Alzheimer's. There's a famous paper that um, describes dementia as a disease of exclusion. And we wanted to do something about that. We wanted to say, no, we're not going to allow people to be excluded, or at least we're gonna to try to provide programs that would help to overcome that feeling of being excluded. I think it's really important for Carl to stay busy so that 
he stays stimulated, he stays active, and he likes to know that he has something to do, something that makes him feel worthy. The memory cafes were the first thing we started, so um, we are providing these regular opportunities for people to get together, socialize uh, in an informal way, have a good time, meet other people. There's just a bunch of nice people that aren't fortunate enough to, um, and I'm in that group, that just happens to have a hard time. I think one of the things that have been painful to me is to watch somebody I love very much slip away in little tiny pieces. It's not like when someone dies, you grieve. This is a constant, ongoing grief. As you watch them just lose parts and pieces of themselves. I think we also need to be looking more closely at research on various kinds of psychosocial interventions that will enable caregivers, for example, to feel better about their role. It is so hard. It is so hard to do this 24-7. If, if we want to make our community better for people with dementia, we have to make it better for the people who are caring for the people with dementia. There are places and things that people really could do if they understood the disease and how helpful that would be. Um, it buys me some time alone from Carl when, um, so that, because I still continue to volunteer and do the things that I do. I am very grateful um, for our church and wonderful friends who have stepped up and um, go places with Carl. Um, no, I go with them. <laughs> Um, they have a good time. He has good people that, you know, at least one or two days a week. They come in, they go places, they do things, keep him occupied. There's uh, quite a few people that, that in our area it, uh, <laughs> that I didn't know as well or anything like that. But in the last while, these guys come around and, hey, I gotta go to Kakana. Okay, I'll go. <laughs> and, and that's been going on now. Yeah. And, and I enjoy it and they seem to enjoy it. Right. Since we have no cure, um, the, it's inevitable that we're going to see more cases because more people are living longer. This is a revolution in human history. Communities are going to have to figure out how uh, we can um, be more supportive of people who have memory loss in our bars and restaurants, in you know, places like banks. Uh, so all these community organizations are going to have to take into account that some of their customers uh, or clients are going to be experiencing memory problems and how are they going to respond to them and how are they going to make them feel welcome and a lot of it just relates to getting to know the person uh, and um, I think that that's uh, something that we often fail to think about you know we just kind of see generic old person with gray hair and memory problems and you know we never really take the time to know who this person is all of us have vulnerabilities. Um, all of us have weaknesses. Um, and, um, and people who have dementia remind us of that. And, and so we want to keep them at arm's length sometimes. And Carlos has said to me, I'm not worth much anymore, am I? And I have to laugh at that and say, you are worth a great deal to me. Look all the good you have done. Look at the good you continue to do. We're still partners. We're partners in this together. <laughs> the best thing that came out was she stayed with me.